The Monero Talk Price Report is sponsored by The Crypto Vigilante, your expert looking glass into the world of cryptocurrency trading and investing. Go to CryptoVigilante.io to sign up to their newsletter. Monero Talk is also made possible by our viewers and listeners like you. The Monero Talk Price Report starts now. All right, Mr. X, thanks for coming on. Uh, we're doing a special episode today where we're going to be talking about the Monero price. We normally don't discuss Monero price on this show, uh, but I think it's about time we talk about it. The Monero community, I think, has some of us have been a little bit concerned about the price, particularly versus Bitcoin. We're doing well against the dollar, like a lot of cryptos are, but uh, I think a lot of us are hoping or wondering why. Bitcoin or Monero hasn't rallied more against Bitcoin. Uh, in fact, it's, it's dropped quite a bit recently. Uh, but today, today is Sunday. It's January 10th. We're seeing a nice little rally. I wanted to bring on Mr. X. We've been speaking offline a little bit. We had him on the show a while ago. Uh, he's a, one of the representatives from Crypto Vigilante. He's uh, very well informed regarding uh, the fundamentals of Monero, but I also found out that he uh, knows about the uh, quite a bit about technical analysis as well. So we're going to do uh, a price focused update show. Mr. X, take it away. Where are we at? What currently is the price of Monero? Where do you see it going? Have we bottomed out against uh, BTC? So, uh, so I have here on my screen um, a price chart that goes before, all the way back um, to pretty much. Pretty uh, soon, shortly after Monero started on 20, early 2014, this chart data starts um, in May, and uh, we are, as you can see here, um, uh, price dropped a bit, and then we, there's two uh, highs that formed um, in 2015 and in 2016, and I've drawn a trend line here, kind of that extends all the way out to the present time here, um, to show that support. Or, or I guess prior or resistance, which has turned into support now. And as you can see here, I've drawn some yellow uh, prediction <laughs> lines here showing where I think maybe price could go potentially. I've also drawn some trend lines here, these dashed gray lines, um, showing um, how it was in a downtrend over the past uh, two or three years here since the highs in, um, I guess, late 20 uh, or 17, 2018. Um, and then, uh, as you can see here, it, it broke down the support level. So there's a lot of people that were worried um, that maybe we were going to break below this this support further down here. But it looks like right now we have a very uh, here, I'll zoom in a little bit. We have a very bullish uh, wick uh, on the candlestick here, which is showing that this looks like reversal here. So it looks like we are experiencing a reversal from the support area, which I've shown in the blue that long blue rectangle. Um, then we also have some other indicators here. Um, so I'm going to zoom in, zoom in a little bit on another time frame so I can show you what's going on actually right now. So I'll just go ahead and refresh the page. Were you, were you surprised to see it go so low against Bitcoin? I was, yes. I was not expecting it to go quite quite so low. Um, but I think some of the fundamental catalysts that caused the uh, price drop was the uh, recently um, Monero was delisted from the Bittrex, Bittrex exchange, uh, which uh, which is not really that high of a volume exchange. So I think there was the market was kind of panicking um, out of fear that the regulators that were clamping down on them, and that was why that they uh, delisted it. But um, there's other uh, exchanges like Kraken, which actually has a U.S. banking license uh, in the state of Wyoming, a special depository institution license, which. Um, but it shows that they are fully compliant with the law. So, um, and I know Justin Ehrenhofer recently did, and several other members of the American community did the comply first or to show that um, Monero is fully compliant with all laws. But anyway, going back to the chart, uh, technical analysis here, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the uh, four hour chart showing how we actually have a bullish reversal that looks to be happening here, uh, that appears to be in process. So, let me zoom in on this chart. Um, so actually, as you can still see, there's that blue support area. We have a very long-term blue support, or a long, uh, uh, long-term historical support zone. zone. Um, and as you can see here, as I've drawn with the, the gray dashed lines, there is a descending wedge 
pattern which uh, formed recently. And, um, and actually, you can even see how the, the MACD indicator is going up. So that's actually a um, like a bullish divergence, actually, on the, the MACD versus the price. And then we also have this descending wedge. Um, and then we have this bullish volume coming in here, um, showing how the price is reversing. And actually, we've already broken into the Ichimoku cloud, which is this red um, this red pattern how it's going down. Yeah, what is that what does that mean exactly? I, I have no technical analysis abilities, by the way. I'm just a I'm a fundamentals guy, you know, my take on Monero, everybody's heard it a million times. I, I just think it's it's a it's a better version of digital gold than Bitcoin is. It's it's a better form of of digital cash than than Bitcoin is. Uh, so that that's I, I invest based on that, not based on TA. And if anything, I've seen uh, recently uh, this being a time to accumulate, uh, as I feel like it's been one of the most undervalued crypto assets out there. Just it's been overlooked. Uh, but yeah, so from a technical analysis perspective, what so what what are these uh, these clouds that you're talking about? What what do those even mean? Yeah, so uh, yeah, so interestingly, so when the price is below, see how this this is currently red, kind of been. Now I'm actually going to zoom out out a little bit here, but if you look up here, I don't know if you can see that green how it was green there, the fact that price uh, fell below this cloud was a bearish sign. So once it broke below this cloud back in December, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, um, once it broke below, price fell, and then of course it retested this cloud, and it mm -hmm. failed to get back above it. So since it, it tried to kind of kind of hug the bottom of the cloud, and then it, didn't, it, did, it showed no signs of really reversing and going back above it, so it continued price uh, a lot of sellers began to panic more, and then as you see here, this was a pretty panic sell off the high volume in this area. And then price uh, retested those lows and broke below that there, and even retested trying to go back up, failed to get back above that um, that resistance, and then fell even faster um, and deeper here on, on high on, uh, additionally high volume here at the beginning of January, and then went down here. But as you can see down here in this lower part, this is a uh, descending wedge pattern here, which is actually a bullish pattern. Season. Price did not break down further um, below this, this the end of this descending wedge. Did not break below, I believe, this 33 or 34 area, 0 0.0034. Um, instead, it actually bullishly reversed. It broke above here. That's actually a very bullish uh, sign here. That the fact that it started to reverse. So if it's, the price can continue reversing, as you can see, it's already broken into the the four-hour Ichimoku cloud, which is this red. Uh, resistance here, if it, if it can get above that, that'll actually be a very bullish sign. So, what I'd be doing is, is considering, I mean, trying to buy it on any dips, um, for sure. And, I mean, if you're not in Monero, I would be trying to accumulate it at these levels. I do believe it's still very, very undervalued, um, fundamentally. But even here on these indicators, you can even see, um, the, actually right here, the uh, Fisher Transform Indicator. Down here, there was a buy signal that happened right here. Shortly before it broke above this descending wedge, and then when it broke above the descending wedge, that of course was another buy signal. As you can see, the price spiked pretty quickly there, and there's more bullish volumes coming in here. So I would expect to see this kind of continue and potentially more upside. Now we'll be coming up to some resistance here in the 53 area, um, but if it can, if it can uh, get above that or above this, this resistance here, that would also be a bullish sign. So. So yeah, I'll be what I'll be. I would be doing is watching to see how it goes, and of course, it may it'll probably come back down to test support, and then then we'll then we'll know if it's a I guess a really a long term reversal, which I do think is possible. Yeah, are you, are you feeling pretty confident that the low is in regarding XMR versus BTC? Yes, I, I do think that's a very strong possibility. Um, I mean, it kind of remains to be seen how if more volume comes in as more volume does come in. Um, then when the, it'll be more confirmed, I think. But um, but yeah, I think. I mean, this just seems. It, it seems that it was sold, oversold, very, very low. So in my opinion, I think it is pretty likely to. Um, it's more likely for it to continue rallying, especially if BTC pulls back. I think. Um, it looks like BTC actually gets at thirty-eight thousand three hundred forty-nine right now. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some more consolidation, maybe even. Maybe even a little bit of a, a further sell-off in BTC, and in that case, I would expect to see the XMR BTC pair uh, increase even more. Yeah, I mean, because 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 actually, the other thing I want to go to. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I, I wanted to switch over to the XMR uh, US dollar 
other pair here. So um, okay, that yeah, I was, was going to say before, before we leave, before we leave that where we can. But I was going to say what I've noticed uh, just anecdotally. I mean, it, it appears that you know when Bitcoin falls, uh, Monero unfortunately falls faster, and when Bitcoin goes up, Monero goes up, but not as fast. Uh, which is which is quite unfortunate, and it's led to this very uh, long bleed against Bitcoin. And then Monero seems to catch up when in the in the moments where Bitcoin is consolidating, uh, and then that's when you start to see Monero start to crawl and catch up. Is that is that a fair assessment? Yes, that's actually what's happened. So it's kind of interesting. Over as these market cycles occur, um, I, I believe kind of during the bear markets, um, that is what would happen. I mean. But the thing is, now that Bitcoin has entered a bull market now, and now it's broken its previous all-time high of the nineteen thousand six hundred or so, or twenty thousand dollar area. Um, now that we're in the, I mean, it's in the thirties and hit the low forties recently. Um, I believe this is the time that we'll see fundamentally sound cryptos like Monero actually accelerate against Bitcoin. And I think, I mean, some people are we call it like alt seeds and <laughs> or things like that. That's where actually you end up seeing altcoins rise against Bitcoin's price. And then they actually both go up together, and then the fundamentally sound ones like Monero would um, they actually end up rising faster. So you end up, if you hold Monero, you actually end up making even more money, or even you end up experiencing more gains in dollars in terms of dollars profits uh, than Bitcoin than just holding Bitcoin. So as you can see back here in uh, 2016, we had a very strong uh, rally from, I guess from uh, let's see about 40 cents as shown here. In 2015, up to a high of about almost about $500 or so, depending on which exchange you're looking at for Monero. And then, as you can see here, we had a, a long downtrend um, in, since the highs of uh, late 2017 and beginning of 2018. Um, and then, right now, as you can see, I drew this trend line. And back in uh, July, we broke above, I think around this July time, right here, we broke above that downtrend. And that's when Monero started to turn bullish, as you can see. Been rising ever since. So I've actually drawn some yellow arrow showing where I think price could potentially go in the coming the next couple uh, next few years here. Where do you, so where do you see us going uh, in terms of XMR BTC price and in terms of XMR USD price? Well, this is yeah, this is the XMR USD price that I've drawn here. Um, so this is I could I wouldn't be surprised to see Monero going to like I, I've drawn it here. I've drawn like let's see maybe breaking this five hundred dollar all time high within the next this coming year, um, and then maybe even going up, maybe even within a year from now or so to maybe even $1,000 or so um, per Monero, or per, uh, $1,000 per Monero, um, and then and maybe even in the year after that going up to, I think, maybe two or 3000 potentially, and then another pullback, and then this is just kind of all hypothetical, but if it ends up going parabolic, it could go up to I put like maybe nine or $10,000 Monero in the next couple of years. The next maybe two or three years, it could be more. But um, this is, these are just ideas, and also a lot of it depends also on what Bitcoin does potentially, um, or just in general how how things go. But um, so any, any what what does your chart then look for look like for for XMR BTC for the for the future? Uh, where do you see us going against BTC? I mean, the fact that we're struggling to to get a, above point, you know, uh, zero zero five now is. Um, you know, I, I never thought we'd see the day. So, what, where, where do you think we get back to? What becomes the new normal uh, for Monero versus BTC? Do we get back to 0 0.01 anytime soon? Um, I mean, I don't know. It, it might be. I mean, there'll be some work that'll need to be done for it to get above point zero one. I don't think that's going to happen right away. And actually, I drew out. This was an idea that I drew um, for XMR BTC. So right now we have it down here in the point zero four four area. It did drop into the support area. It may retest it. So this is just my a, a very optimistic idea of where it could go. But it could end up coming back down, and maybe it will try to double bottom down in this area. Maybe it could come back down um, and then eventually go up. So maybe it will take longer. This is just a very optimistic one. But, um, but yeah, but it could be, hopefully within, I would hope within a year, it would be back to point of one, maybe, maybe less. And all, a lot of it depends on, on uh, I think, Issues of like maybe a major fungibility crisis, um, like if there's a lot of um, chain anal the blockchain analytics happening and uh, people's coins being blacklisted all around, and 
people. Uh, and then also the coming uh, atomic swaps is going to be another big thing, too, depending on how soon we actually get the integration of the atomic swaps into uh, wallets, and we will be able to exchange um, significant amounts of liquidity um, using those swaps. So, uh, and also just in general, like adoption of more merchants accepting it, um, things like that. So, yeah, let's talk about that too. I mean, real world use. Uh, we're seeing transaction volume go up quite a bit, right? The actual transactions that are being made uh, on the Monero network. I think we're starting to see some some real spikes there in terms of transaction volume. Yes, yeah, it has been making new highs over the past um, few months. So there's been yeah, all time highs for daily uh, transactions um, on the on chain for Monero. Yeah, I see, I see that as bullish. I see the fact that uh, you know it's it's be it's really becoming the coin of the dark markets. You know whether or not ethically you think that's ba a bad thing or a good thing. I think that's indicative of the fact that it has uh, a real use case uh, and it's it's proven to be usable in that scenario. Um, and it has a real market of customers that that need it. Um, so. That, I find that very interesting. And then the, you know, the regulations and talk of regulations we're seeing um, and how it also appears that Monero is kind of uh, being put under a microscope uh, as opposed to some of these other coins where, you know, governments are taking a close look at it. Um, exchange, some exchanges being concerned about the risk of dealing with it. I personally... Uh, see those things overall long term as bullish because it's proving that Monero is uh, living up to its value proposition of being digital cash. Do you also see it that way? Or how do you see it? I, I absolutely agree with you, actually. <laughs> um, the, I mean, there are several things you mentioned, um, some of them being the regulatory side of things with, um, uh, actually, I believe the, it was like the, one of the like Monero, some of the Monero, Monero uh, developers and um, I, I think Justin Ehrenhofer and some other Monero community members, um, they had written a, a document that was for the for FinCEN showing how um, I think Arctic, Arctic Mine uh, and some other people put that document together showing how it's fully compliant with the uh, the uh, anti-money laundering laws and, and basically how, and I know that they're trying to, FinCEN is adding the Thing. It's like you have like the three thousand um, dollar or ten thousand dollar transaction amounts going to what I guess what they had called unhosted wallets or or, um, or self-hosted wallets. I guess um, whenever you send them in and out of a regulated exchange, um, you have um, basically once once uh, there's regulatory clarity with that, and um, that would definitely help businesses that are maybe nervous about adopting Monero to actually be able to adopt it because they have that regulatory clarity. Um, now, of course, there's some people or some extreme libertarians and anarchists that are, just don't want to have to do with any of that, but the thing is that that does help more capital to be able to come in. Um, so, and, and yeah, I see that as a, as a wake up call to people that use crypto, uh, because if you're, you know, if you're a Bitcoin user and those regulations are in place, and you're removing your $3,000 or $10,000 worth of Bitcoin off of the regulated exchange to your um, to your uh, privately hosted wallet, or uh, I, you know your your unhosted wallet, um, and you're revealing that you are the owner of that wallet. In Bitcoin's case, your transactions are then traced beyond can potentially be traced very easily traced beyond that point. Whereas in Monero's case, uh, even if you you know reveal to the exchange. Uh, and they report it that you're saying that you're sending Monero off from uh, the exchange to your own wallet. Um, at that point, it becomes a black hole and you can just use your Monero uh, privately. So I see that as, you know, obviously I see that as a, as a plus uh, for Monero. It's showing that even with this potential regulation, Monero will still be able to provide privacy to people. Just like if you went to a bank and you took out cash from the bank, the bank knows you took out $10,000 and they may have to do uh, reporting. Uh, but then with that $10,000, you can 
do as you wish with it without, you know, without it being traced from there on out. Absolutely. Um, yeah, because yeah, like just like you said, um, that is actually going to draw more people to Monero because once people realize um, how they're being tracked um, even more it's, uh, with, with any other cryptocurrency, which we actually have, uh, the crypto vigilante we like to call everything that's basically what other people call privacy coins <laughs> as actually a surveillance coin, kind of like how you've said as well. I think you have, or other people have mentioned that aspect as well. But um, really, um, fungible digital cash is, is, is really what the whole reason that uh, was, uh, what, how Bitcoin was made because it was, I mean, it was meant to be an electronic peer to peer cash system. And cash is fungible, and that's a very fundamental quality of sound money. Um, and, and basically, right now, we're going to be entering, entering basically into a dystopian surveillance world. If everyone's using Bitcoin, that actually scares me because uh, if you have these reporting requirements that they're trying to put out with FinCEN, they're going to have a lot deeper insight into what you do with your money, who you're interacting with, sending and receiving. Um, and then all that's, of course, being tracked. Chain analysis, other blockchain analytics companies. Um, uh, but with Monero, you actually have personal freedom and uh, you don't have to worry about um, other parties, whether it be governments or, or, um, or just other companies or other parties seeing your wallet balances and what you're spending your uh, funds on. Yeah, well, well uh, one last question. We'll wrap this up. I, I know you're a busy, busy man, Mr. X, and I appreciate you coming on and talking about price. Uh, which I think a lot of people are going to appreciate. They, they, they want to hear a price discussion. I think it's important to talk about price too, because, you know, uh, it's in, indicative of, of how, uh, well Monero is doing in terms of adoption also, right? So we see transaction volume going up. That's meaningful, but, uh, just an increase of price is, is showing that, that there's use there and there's demand for Monero. My last question is, you know, often you hear Bitcoin folk talk about the fact that, you know, Bitcoin is is the currency that that will be used. It will be the primary, uh, you know, rails of the financial system, and then people can opt into Monero as needed for spending, uh, and therefore, um, you know, Monero isn't really as useful or important as Bitcoin. But what what I don't understand is if th if that's going to be the case. Uh, isn't Monero going to have to have a very large market cap and uh, a lot of liquidity for that to be possible? If I'm going to swap out of my Bitcoin to, you know, to make a large purchase and I'm going to effectively use Monero for that purchase, uh, Monero is going to have to be worth quite a bit to allow that to happen, right? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and not, I mean, actually, you mentioned it that way. In some ways, um, I mean, already there's there's uh, XMR.to, which allows you to hold Monero. So you have your private funds in Monero that no one can see your wallet balance. But then whenever you, if I have to use Bitcoin, I can just use like a Monarujo.io or Take Wallet to, uh, to just buy something with BTC or convert it to XMR.to um, and anonymously spend Bitcoin. Now, of course, I'd rather just send somebody Monero, but a lot of people don't know about Monero. Um, or maybe some stores may not accept it yet. But um, yeah, ideally, everyone should just accept Monero because it's less risk for the merchant anyway. They don't have to worry about where the Bitcoins have been or if they're dirty or not. But, um, but yeah, you were saying kind of the other way around that, that um, if it's if people are accepting Monero, then, or maybe they're holding, holding other reserve funds in BTC, that would require Monero to have a higher market cap. So if you have that liquidity going back and forth, that's going to, I think, automatically boost Monero's market cap as well. If you have that. And also, when, like I may have mentioned earlier, the, uh, the cross-chain atomic swaps that are being built for uh, across Bitcoin and Monero, um, that will also be very helpful in uh, providing an avenue for that liquidity. Right. Do, do you foresee a time where, you know, uh, where people aren't going to want to necessarily give up their Monero for, you know, Bitcoin, where you don't know if it is dirty. I mean, is isn't that a potential possibility that we get to that point? Um, I mean, well, I mean, for me, I mean, I, I don't know if you probably feel the same way, but I don't really feel safe in Bitcoin. I don't like to hold Bitcoin unless I absolutely have to. I always try to stay in Monero, and I encourage other people to accept Monero. Um, and it makes more sense if you're a merchant to accept Monero anyway, because you don't have to worry about if the incoming coins are dirty. 
whenever I'm talking to a business or anybody that's trying to get into crypto, I always try to explain those things to them. Yeah, no, I know, I know me and you were both at that stage, but I'm wondering if you uh, foresee that becoming, uh, you know, adopted by the market at lar large. Are, are people going to start to realize this, that they may want to get hold, get their Monero now for future use or start thinking about Monero as the coin that will be used as opposed to thinking, all right, I'm going to hold, buy and hold Bitcoin and just... Um, use Bitcoin in the future as needed when I want to spend. It doesn't seem like a very uh, realistic way of anticipating how crypto is going to be used in the future. I mean, I feel like if, if that's going to be the case, then you're going to want to obtain and hold Monero, right? Well, yeah. I mean, Monero is, is perfectly logical. Once people start using Bitcoin, they're going to realize they should be using Monero instead. I mean, already we have people, I think, uh, I think it was the founder of PayPal, I think you interviewed a while back, he was trying to buy something and his, or so one of the accounts thought it was dirty, even though it may not have been, but they banned him because they thought his coins were dirty or after he spent something somewhere they got dirty or they thought it dirty, dirty. Um, so anyway, the point is like, even things that aren't any fault of your own, um, basically you could end up being banned because of, um, just blockchain analytics. Um, and, and because it's a non-fungible currency, you really can't have a functional currency if uh, it's not fungible or digital cash. It needs to be fungible. So as people begin to use Bitcoin, I mean, if people just buy and huddle Bitcoin, I mean, that's obviously there's large institutions that are buying lots of Bitcoins. But as people try to actually use it, uh, they're going to run into problems uh, just from day-to-day -day use that's going to cause them to look for something like Monero. And it's naturally going to uh, it's going to rise very large. <laughs> I'm very pretty, quite sure of it. I mean, um, but uh, yeah, because of because of that fundamental issue of fungibility. All right, Mr. X, thank you. Thanks for coming on, talking about price. Uh, maybe we'll have you on again soon. Hopefully, we'll be in an even better better position at that time. Uh, but th things are looking hopeful at this point. I think I I I think we hit the bottom against BTC once again. I'm not a technical analysis guy, so. Uh, you know, my guess is as good as anybody else's. Uh, but definitely from a fundamental perspective, I feel like Monero is so over, uh, are under, undervalued right now, uh, versus all the other cryptos. I absolutely, yeah, 100% agree. I think, uh, actually, I can go back to my chart here, but yeah, but I think we had a, a panic uh, and oversell panic here that went into the support area. So yeah, I would not be surprised to see a strong reversal back to the upside. And, Continue. Um, and if we can get above this trend line here, that would be a, a very positive sign if that happens quickly. That will be even more of a confirmation to think that the bottom is likely in. So, uh, so yeah, that is, I'm hoping we'll see that. And, uh, and uh, hopefully things will be turning back up here pretty soon. All right. Thank you, Mr. X. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. And then, of course, um, for people that may be interested, um, I am an analyst at the Crypto Vigilante, and our website is uh, CryptoVigilante.io. Again, that's Crypto, C-R-Y-P-T-O, uh, V-I-G-I-L-A-N-T.io. All right. Yeah, we'll put that in the show notes as well. Uh, and maybe we'll, we'll touch base with you in a few weeks, or we could do this you know, on a monthly basis, we could talk. We could we could talk about price some more. I know people love hearing hearing about the price. Yes, yeah. I was gonna say the people who subscribe to us, uh, we put out technical analysis on Monero. Uh, I think about four times a week, and Bitcoin as well, and uh, also other uh, altcoins. As well. Yeah, I know crypto vigilante is is definitely uh, really has their eye on Monero, and I believe is 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 invested in Monero in a big way. Is that correct? Yes, that is one. That is our actually our top holding. So, so we are very oh, wow. excited. But we're champions of Monero. We we talk about it a lot. Actually, yeah, pretty often. But um, yeah, and I think I do definitely agree with you that the market severely undervalues it right now and is unaware of the issues of fungibility. Um, and I believe as people, all these new entrants into the market, realize how cryptocurrencies actually work and how money works, or just uh, as they use it, they'll realize. I think as they run into these fungibility issues that. Uh, the price will, meet, will inevitably need to rise. So. All right. All right, Mr. X, thank you. Thanks again.
Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.